so this is the explanation of yes of my where i started all yesterday this is the pdf file i'm not sure this pdf file is attached or not but i will give it to you on the chat window so you will have it three files are important html javascript and css yesterday we learned about all these divisions that we are making the first division that we made with an id is a game the second the third the fourth the fifth and the sixth and these two are the files that i gave you a brief introduction that the script file of javascript will go in in src script src and then css will go in this header section wherever you want to put it let's move on to the division that we are making in css we mean star means apply to all i want the game portion which i created with the id game i want to do something with it what i wanted to do i want to make sure when it is been drawn in html it will be drawn with the width of 300 pixel height of 500 pixel border will be one pixel and border will be solid and black margin is equals to auto box sizing is equals to border box let's see don't worry if i lose this game my main motive is to lose here but as you can see this is the border this is the division that i made width is 300 pixel height is 500 border is solid solid line it's not a dashed line and it's a box border is a box box sizing so i don't know whether there are some of these things that are optional but definitely you need height you definitely need width you definitely need this these three are the ones that i want if i want to change the color from black to red i can do that no problem or any other color margins autos and leave that box sizing i personally don't test everything that out that is out there in css but i know i can tell you and i can explain you what is happening here now look at the character this is the character this is our character then there's another character which is a black character which we will come back to it later which we have actually created so what are the things that we have so far created in html file let's open up the html file so i can go to that code as well if i need to character is also created with the division but i haven't explained the boundaries of it yet i i know i will be creating one thing i game which i just did right now in css now i will be creating the block and i will be creating a character let's focus on that and then i'll come back to the left and right in a moment so this block is created where it is first initially located it is located at the corner which is the zeroth location so the left side is standing it should be standing at zero pixel and because it is confined it is one of the sub portion of the game and the reason i can say it with confidence is here first the division is the parent first division parent which is the game this character will actually will reside under the game box or the game boundary so the game boundary is already defined now the character is getting defined so what character will look like character will look like this character where it will appear character will be red width is equals to 100 pixel height is equals to 100 pixel and there is a reason for width to be 100 because the total width of the on the on the frame or the game in which it is reside so game is kind of acting like a frame for me now so on the frame this is the frame i have portioned it into three parts 100 200 and 300 
that is why the total width of it is 300 right now it is i am just allocating the character to be 100 and that is why you see the height and the width of his is 100 by 100 so if i look at it this is if i place three box of the same sizes this red box which is not there and another red box which is not there how many boxes will how three boxes needed to be covered to make it a completely filled at the bottom right if you look at this one i will probably need four because uh, probably need five one two three four and five i'm just visually exam thinking about it right now i'm not going to create boxes on the screen right now to show you but you can think of that yes kishan is right we have we have five to cover like that but it is actually placed where and uh, the character is placed where height is equals to 100 so it means keep in mind this portion is 500 this portion is 400 300 200 and 100 and that is why you are seeing it is showing up at width 100 pixel height 100 pixel and the left portion where it is actually been started the left x axis of this is actually left is actually zero if i would have put the left at 100 it would have started where it would have started in the middle of the screen here all right or if i would have put, have put the left to be 200 my character would have not started here it would have started here so you need to play with those numbers to make sure you are good let's change that let's i will make small changes here so you will see this is my css file character that i'm going to place is let's say i want to place it at 300 pixel i want to make mistakes i want to play around let me run my program where it is sorry it is out of the box at the moment so i should have placed it okay the mistake is left is zero because we start with zero the next point is 100 the other next point is 200 so it should be maximumly be starting at 200 because we started at zero so now refresh it one more time let's see the box will be inside see it is now being settled here so this is my red character so i am making portions on the screen forget about the white right now but look at this block which is getting be, which is which will be getting dropped from the top that block will be of the same size as my character width 100 height 100 the place where will it will initially emerge will be from the top of the from the top of it so it means it is on the top top will be on the 100 as i said when i was showing you the screen you have to be very clear in your mind this is 500 this corner is 500 this corner is zero 500 and zero that is why i placed this guy at zero initially and the top means 500 so every time top 500 so 500 meaning 500 could be here this is the left of it so left could be any random left could be any random place but the place where it will be on the top it will be starting at this point which is 500 and then 
we are going to decrement it somehow that is that logic is coming in a moment but that's a little bit of tricky knowledge to understand but that will be coming soon so game character and the block is created so when the left arrow key is pressed hash left which is again one of the uh let me see okay let's go back to code now if i need to come back to couple of things i will come back to those in a moment now here is the important piece function move left function move right here is the problem part is starting what we are going we are using java script not java this time so java script in javascript you define the variable with the word let you you don't define it with the word int or double or float you just use the word left uh, let and the ver the variable that i am defining is called left so what we need to first get is what we need to first know is where is our currently currently located my character is character is represented with red remember that because i already i already created that character here and i know what its initial position is i know what its left position is it is zero pixel i have not defined couple of things in the css file at the moment which i am going to do it shortly so what i wanted to know i want to ask where what is the current position of my character if my current position is already sticking to this point if my current let's look at this position if my current position is 200 if i press a left key where should it move to it should reduce 100 pixel out of it isn't it yes it should reduce 100 pixel out of it so this line if you look at it windows dot get computed style and this is javascript that you can find with the uh, objects objects positioning with this code you can find what is the current property of the property name called left it will give you that value so you assign it to a variable called left okay so what you did here you said that hey javascript can you return me the value of the left coordinate or the very bottom left coordinate where or the x axis value this is actually an x axis value this is actually an x axis value here can you give me this value this point it says sure it will return me that value in which variable left variable so if i pressed a left arrow key what should happen if it is standing at this position it should reduce how many pixel 100 pixel to be precise to be here isn't it yes that is why i am saying whatever the value you have received subtract 100 from it so it will say sure once the 100 pixels are reduced this block that we have created will move to which location this location and how we can get this what is this what is this go all about what is this going all about 
you can get this from w3 schools get computed style meaning so any division or any character that you have created you can get its value or the left or the right or the top or the bottom whatever attribute value you want to get get from javascript javascript can return you because you have assigned a division to it and division will be returning that value to it so this left is actually this left that you are talking about this left so you said that please return me the value this this will give you the value and de deduct the left from it but now you want to apply it to that character so character dot style dot left this will give you that whole value and you want to deduct in the left how much you started left let's say you started left at 200 you deducted 100 pixels from it then you said left minus 100 so that will become 200 but in html you want to reduce pixels so you cannot just leave left you have to add a pixel to it px value to it so that is why you added left plus px so it will add a 100 pixel so let me go one more thing What will happen to the right? If the move right button is pressed, what will happen? The 100 pixel to the right, uh, 100 pixel should be added to that character. How many pixels should be added? So if the if it is at zero, 100 pixel should be added. If it is at 100, 100 pixel should be added. So it will be constantly moving around. But you want to make sure because this one is not covering this scenario this scenario is not covered if you press 100 pixel and you keep pressing the right arrow key your character will keep moving to the further to the right or your character will keep moving further to the left because you have not stopped it or you haven't checked it where to stop it should not go out of the boundaries of this box in in totality so you have to make sure you add this condition. If the left reaches this point, zero point, keep it where it is. Don't move anything further. Don't, don't, if you reduce, what is the, if it is greater than zero, that's fine. But if it is, if it is, if it reaches this point, which is probably negative now, because you are getting, this is the zeroth point. If you go further to the left, you will be in the negative because it has to stay in the boundaries of its originating parent. If it is going out further to the left, we want to keep it to the left. We don't go want to go any further. We will not reduce. We will be reducing, but at the same time, we'll say keep it to the left. Keep it to the left. We don't want to go any further than down that. Or we can say if the left is less than or if it is greater than 100, then keep adding. Otherwise, don't, don't go any further. That's what we are saying. Same thing to the right. If the right reaches, if the right and this point, this is 100, this is 200, this is 300. And if we say go 400, then this is the point so we want to restrict it that it should not move any further from here so this is the condition that we added so if left is less than 300 keep doing what you are doing other than that don't entertain move right or move left those two functions what are those two functions when those two functions should trigger those two functions should trigger when the key is pressed what key is pressed that event is when the event is arrow left so in javascript arrow left key means 
left arrow key on the keyboard in javascript arrow right means right arrow key on the keyboard what are the two functions that you are calling when the left arrow key is called move left function is called and what is move left is doing all this code is doing in the move left what is move right is doing when the right arrow key is pressed all this is what it is doing and it is also keeping my character within the boundaries as well these two checks are important these are keeping me within my boundaries javascript get computer style to get the computed property of the css property of an element so these are no go areas for my character next is to slide the block down right so in the javascript animation slide one second infinite we or to which one we are applying it to we are applying this animation to our object block object in the css animation slide after every one second infinite number of times okay let's do this let's go back here javascript slide so now this is building upon what your knowledge have learned learned in so click me so how it is happening we have to look at the code right animation code this is the key so you don't have to perfectly see what is happening but the thing is you have to look at what is the logic that is been applied so that is what is been applied here so let me see if i can give you a better example i think I think I'm missing a link here. Let me see if I can find that link. Yeah, I found that link. I'll share that link with you as well in the chat window in a moment. I find that. This is the CSS animation kind of thing you are looking at. Don't focus on the left side on the right side, just look at this one. we created a division and for that division i am using the animation my move 5 second infinite so i call this portion my move and for my move i am going to say frame has to change when you call this which has to happen every 5 second start from 0 pixel and move left 200 pixel so by this time the animation finishes it will be ending up at this so i'm going to paste this link in the chat window so this is the same kind of idea that is being used in this animation that you're looking at what i am saying is that 
every five second we are applying it on a particular object what object that is that division object that we are creating at the moment we are calling it as a div in our case we are calling it as a character or a black character that we are working on and the slide is happening the uh, we are calling it as every five minutes for every five seconds so slide we are calling it as a slide and we are applying the slide here where should it start where should it start uh, from the top every keyframe what will happen 100 pixels should be reduced where should it actually start it should start at 500 pixel and remember it should start at 500 pixel here any place from here right and it should reduce 100 pixel so it will reduce 100 pixel by the end of one second two second three second i don't know i haven't really calculated the timing of it but this is going to happen so the name that we have given here slide we are using that slide keyword here if in this example that you are looking at what keyword is being used my move is used so that my move is again used in the keyframe so word difference has mapped in my program and i am asking it that it has to run for five seconds and infinitely and it is running it infinitely so if you look at this code same thing happening slide will happen one second infinite linear and these are some attributes that you're looking at for the maximum of five seconds yes and the keyframe slide will be reducing 100 pixel each time for each one second that is passed and five seconds it will run for each one second passed reduce 100 pixel but always start from the top of top 100 pixel and the weight should be shown as 100 percent of its capacity of its size 100 percent of its size actually not the capacity so we added a couple of more lines positions is a relative position so it will know what is my current position and then it will go to the next position next position next position it will slide down so this is used for the slider so going back these are the couple of things that are added in the in this so there is a problem that you are seeing once it slides down this code is is not is right now partial code the video that i will send you will explain all of these impartial codes uh, impartial codes and then he will going to improve these problems this is another problem so it was sliding down but it went down anyways i am not going to explain how this is fixed but my main purpose was to show you how the slide is happening how the object was moved how i fixed this problem we will see that in a video we created a to fix this problem we added a white box at the bottom and this is that white box where is that white box is created it's created somewhere somewhere at the bottom the pixels have to be has to be calculated if i move this pixel around a little bit so width will be 300 because i want this when it comes down like this it will have to be completely dissolved in that white box that i'm going to create so i will create a white box and those white box have to be created three places right so it will completely dissolve because the black box can randomly come down from any other location. So next thing is I'll come back to the white box in a in a more in a more important. It is not important to me because it is just sliding it down and, and droning somewhere. But my more important part is to make sure that this black box should appear from three random places, either from here, either from here or either from here
so for that what do you think right now right out of the box what do you think will drop the box from here from here or from here what do you think what are what is what what is on top of you i want a programming mind to tell me what is actually i'm wanting to do it could be come from here come from here and come from here what is that is called in programming that you don't know random randomization so you will be seeing a randomization function in javascript very shortly because this is the fun part in the game remember the fun in the game comes when things are random if you know this will be the next move would you have interest in the game probably not we all love games because we don't know what computer is thinking and it will throw out a random plate to us and we are able to catch it or not right so that's what we want in the javascript so next thing we will be using the randomization in the drop box in the drop so we want to make sure the block the black block that we are referring it and bla black block that we are referring it sorry if you look at this block this is the block that we created in an html anything that is in inverted comma and is available in html file and we are referring it in javascript we are referring that one this block variable is created here in the javascript this block has nothing to do with this block until and unless we assign this block that we are creating to this block variable and which we are actually doing we are actually assigning this block to the block variable and what is block that block is a total black box that we have created with all the black attributes left right and all the top attributes to be a 500 is it yes what we said that get the id item that is block says sure i will show you this block item which is referenced by id with the block i want this guy to be in contention okay sir it will bring that and assign it to the which variable block variable i want to add animation iteration function right animation iteration and you probably don't know what is happening here block dot add event listener we'll come back to that line here in a second what i want in this function that i want to call this function but we all know that if we want to generate a random number between one and two not three three is not included between one and two what will happen it can generate a random number one or two not three zero one and two right because three is not included from the randomization function and this is by the way this is java here small piece of java here and what is this math dot flow doing the problem that we looked in the class this evening this uh, in the earlier when satnam was showing his satnam was showing his uh, code this random number is between 0 1 and 2 but it could be 2.7 it could be 2.5 it could be 2.1 but i want it to be ignoring 0.7 i want it to bring it down to the floor what does floor function does floor brings it to the so if it is 2.5 it will ignore 0.5 and it will say show me the 2 right if it is it's not the solution which satnam is looking for but floor does round up for satnam it was automatically rounding it because he used integer if he would have used 
float that it would not have rounded so sometimes in the scenario when we need rounding down we can use that math dot float so we want instead of 2.5 we want 2.0 remember math dot random always generate a random number with the decimal point if we want to avoid that we need to use floor function so in a real world what does floor and seal meaning so let's say this, if i break this class into three portions one two and three so if i say one point if i say 2.5 and i want to say give me the value two where it will go two is somewhere lying here right huh you can't see my video no my video is is showing up yeah okay so let's say let's actually draw it here this is a classroom a box right 0 1 2 3 i should not have drawn this upper portion so i can get rid of this so if i say if i ask you generate me a random number it will say okay yeah maybe between 0 and 3 so let's see so let's say if i say generate me a random number it's let's say say 1.6 if i say floor this number where it will go to the floor which is what if i say between 2 and 3 it says 2.5 where when i say floor where it will go 2 that's what is happening so that is so random number generating that random number but we are flooring that random number and storing it in which variable random variable so now we have either 0 1 or 2 we want to multiply that with what with 100 so we will have the left value for that right so now we are doing it all on which block the black block and we are adding the listener to this we are going back to this line in a moment but do you understand this that we are add multiplying it with the 100 because we know we need to select a random place where that guy will be dropped it could be 0 it could be 1 it could be 2 whether whichever the random number computer generated it will multiply it by 100 add it to that pixel and then where there it will drop that black box so that's why the style was immediately changed to left so i said whichever the random number is generated please move the black box to that place where the random number is generated so now the left will not be remaining at 0 it will be added to the pixel but it will not add it will not exceed 3 or 4 because it is either 0 either 1 or 2 and that's why you are looking these three arrows understood this part so now we have this created collision is not detected yet collision we will come to it in a second so now we are seeing a block is block is dropped we are able to move left and right adding pixel removing pixel block the black blocks will keep it place until it is getting dissolved at the bottom now we have everything bare bones set up now we have to only think couple of things that are remaining is is to add the collision detection and remember in the game programming collision detection happens when <clears throat> look at this that block is dropping so imagine this is the black red block this is the red block and this is the black block once it drops the top of this the bottom part of this the, the left of this block and the left of this block if they are equal and the top of this block and the bottom of this block if they are equal 
this means collision has happened so left and the top should be <coughs> so the uh, so should be should be matching so we will see that really quickly in here how we are going to detect that the collision so set interval it is going to yeah so let's look at this so we are going to pick up at each interval completion after 5 seconds look at this function i want to see the character dot characters left we are getting that variable and the blocks left if they are both on the falling on the same line if they are here or they are here the left will be aligned and the top of the block and the block character left and block left are equal and the block top is less than 500 and the block top is greater than 300 so meaning that somewhere along this line it is happening then if it is moved this this block has moved till this point this let's say if they are coming here if it is coming from here it is standing somewhere at less than 200 yes it is standing less than 200 it means it is about to collide and it is greater than it is still it is less than 500 as well it is it is obviously dropping so it is less than 500 so that's where the collision has happened and that's why you are that's where you are going to say the game over you just show the alert box and what alert box does it will show you that uh, this one. So we can make it a mobile friendly afterwards. That's another thing that we can learn. But for me, did you guys get most part of the code so far, which I tried to explain? Apart from a couple of things which I have not explained, blog dot add event listener. We can I I will go to that in a moment. Left, right pixel moving left pixel moving right pixel decrementing it why we are decrementing it where the collision happened that is the most important part the collision is about to happen when the left is aligned with the left that is one thing that is why there are two conditions happen there are two conditions we are checking we are not just only saying when the left is aligned with the left when left is aligned with, with the left when they are far apart not only that what we wanted to see that the top of this has reached the 300 pixel already. If it has reached 300 pixel and the left are aligned, we are sure that the collision has happened. That is why you are seeing there's an M% and M%, which means that both conditions have to be true. This condition and this condition have to be true to be a perfect collision. Not just one, not just one both so if we are going to put everything together all three files are dependent on each other html file we are creating the division and portions css file we are beautifying it. We are identifying the objects. We are creating the objects. On top of that, we are creating slide animation in CSS for infinite times for keyframes. So you will have the very basic knowledge of CSS that you have learned in web, website scripting, I think. If you have looked at it there, there will be a key slide frame in CSS that you can learn, with, in which you can learn animating the objects that you have created in html and this is a very small portion that we are looking at so that's a whole big topic and the thing is in this day and age you will not be able to learn everything that is explained in css everything that is explained in html you have to look at somebody else's code how people have done it in stack overflow how people have done it or you might have to look at the book even book will not be able to explain all the things right so some some inspirations you can get from w3 school well this looks very close to it so somebody have used that same logic or that is available on w3 schools to their facility to make game 
and that's what I am trying to explain here. So I have already posted the link from where I got this inspiration for this code. I'll also post the video right now, which is a 15 minutes video, which I want you to see before you leave. So this covers up this game for us whole and totally. You don't have You have the PS, uh, you have the, oh yeah, this link is there already as well. And the animation part is obviously as well. This whole explanation of the PDF file is also available in the course content section of this module where you can see car animation. We call, I called it a car animation, but it could be called as a subway surfer or anything like that. So you have to look at all three parts that I've added in this module. Module four, web-based gaming, car crash game. You have to look at HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. On top of that, you need to understand the link, JS animation link that you are seeing and the car driving PDF file that I created for you. You have to put all the things together to understand it. Now I'm going to share with you the video so you will have it as well. Please add it to your favorites when I'll share that. So please look at this video. It shows you how to how the whole program is coded. I've explained to much extent which I have, but I want you to look at this video. Um, how much long is it? It's not too long. I think it's more around 13, 